Hi, everybody. Welcome to week 13 of Life-Changing Scriptures. This week, I've chosen 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 16 to 18. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. I've chosen this verse because many times in life, we can feel confused as to what God's will is for us. What should we be doing? What should be our attitude? Does God actually want us to be happy all the time in Him? The devil constantly tries to steal our joy and make us confused. He knows that if we're depressed and downcast, that we're more likely to give in to his temptations and turn to entertainment and things of the world instead of turning to God for happiness. Like many people, I've struggled with confusion, I've struggled with depression, and I've asked God, what is your will for my life? And many times, these are the scriptures that he'll bring back to my memory. And while they don't encompass all of God's will for our lives, they're a wonderful building block that we can constantly turn to. According to 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18, the first thing is God wants us to rejoice evermore, which means he wants us to rejoice all the time in him. There are so many scriptures in the Bible that pertain to God wanting us to rejoice in Him. And these are only a small handful of them, such as Psalm 42, verse 11. Why art thou cast down on my soul, and why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise Him, who is the health of my countenance and my God. Romans 12, 12. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. Philippians 4, 4, Rejoice in the Lord alway, and again I say, Rejoice! Psalm 70, verse 4, Let all those that seek thee rejoice and be glad in thee, and let such as love thy salvation say continually, Let God be magnified. Or Psalm 64, verse 10, The righteous shall be glad in the Lord, and shall trust in him, and all the upright in heart shall glory. As I've said, there are dozens more verses that say we should rejoice in the Lord. Yes, there are times when we should weep with those who weep, and times we travail in prayer for other people. But God doesn't want us to be depressed and despondent. Instead, we are to put our hope in God, even during the hard times, and to rejoice in Him, even when the circumstances don't look the best. David wrote many of his psalms while being chased by Saul, and Saul was trying to kill him and destroy him. And in those psalms, he fights against the fear and the worry and the anxiety by pouring out his heart to God. He rejoices in the Lord, and he prays to him. That's the second thing on our list of scriptures today. We are to pray without ceasing. Philippians 4, 6 says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Ephesians 6 verse 18 says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Colossians 4, 2, continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. 1 Timothy 2, verse 8, I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. Over and over the Bible tells us to pray. And praying does not have to sound a, like a long professional mantra. It's us pouring our heart out to God. We say, Lord, I need your help. Lord, deliver me and my family. You know everything I'm going through, and I do know that you hear my prayers, and I know just like you did for David, you will deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence. So prayer is a constant pouring out of our hearts to God, and then we thank him for answering us. That's the third part. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Colossians 2 verses 6 to 7 says, As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. 
Psalm 50, verses 14 to 15. Offer unto God thanksgiving, and pay thy vows unto the Most High, and call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. Ephesians 5, verses 18 to 20. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hebrews 13, verse 15. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. And then Colossians 3 verse 17, And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. All these verses stress that we are to be thankful. We are not to whine and complain and speak death over everything. Instead, we're to thank God for the good things he has done for us and the good things in our lives and thank him that he will bring us through. David thanked God even when he was stuck using rocks as his pillows as he ran for his life. He thanked him when all of his circumstances looked impossible to overcome. He rejoiced in God. He prayed to him. And then he thanked him through the highs and through all the lows. And God ended up delivering David from all his enemies and then raising him up to be king over all his people. He mightily turned his circumstances around because his heart was in the right place and he pursued God no matter what. And he was thankful. So we are to do the same things in our lives. We are to rejoice evermore. We are to pray without ceasing. And we are to give thanks in everything. We don't have to thank God for the bad things. Instead, we're focusing on the positive, such as, oh, thank you, God, for saving my soul. Thank you, God, that one day I will spend eternity in heaven with you and death and sorrow will be no more. Because even if the things in this world continue to get darker and darker, you are my light and you shine brighter and brighter in my life. And I have confidence in you, Lord, that you'll take care of me and my family. You'll protect us. You'll keep us. You'll preserve us. You'll lead us. And I just thank you, Lord, because you're so awesome and you're so incredible. So what I want you to do is... Thank God. Thank him for everything he's done for you. Thank him for dying on the cross and raising him back to life for sinners like us. And then say, thank you, thank you, thank you. As we focus more on the positive and thank him for how good he is, that helps lift all the whining and complaining and the darkness from our spirits. So the next time confusion over God's will or depression tries to hit you, Go back to this list in these scriptures and cling to them. Do what it says to do. Trust that he will guide your footsteps. And in the meantime, rejoice, pray, and give thanks to God. As per usual, I've placed this verse in the playlist. Feel free to download it and listen to it over and over and over. Ask God to quicken it to you. And then, like the word of God says, let's be a doer of the word and not a hearer only, deceiving our own selves. I hope to see you again next week. And thank you so much for listening this week. And as I said, I hope to see you again next week for life-changing scripture number 14. Thanks for listening. First Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. First Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. 
rejoice evermore pray without ceasing in everything give thanks for this is the will of god in christ jesus concerning you first thessalonians 5 16 through 18